morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Hello, early learners. Welcome back to the Art Room, where we are doing the ABCs of art as our study. We did A is for artist, B is for bridge, today is C is for cat. And our cat that I found that was in an interesting painting is this one. It's the blue cat. But let's start out with our hello song. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Our artist today is Chagall, which also starts with the letter C, but it's a CH, so it says CH. Remember I taught you if you hold your C in front of your mouth to catch your sneeze? That's the CH. 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 Here he is, Mark Chagall. He's looking a little surprised that we've taken his picture while he's painting. He was born in Russia, and his paintings were often a story. He would tell a story through his paintings, and he would tell people all about them, and he would always go back to painting about his very beautiful town in Russia. And one of the books that TK uses is called Journey on a Cloud. And I have it over on the side, so when we go um, to say goodbye, you can take a look at that book. And it is a book that tells everything in shades of blue. So we know that Chagall loved the color blue. And this, strangely enough, is called Le Poet. And Le Poet, it means the poet. And he has a many called Le Poet. So you have to know what year he painted it. And this one was painted 1949 and 1950. And it has a blazing sun. Here is the poet sitting down below. And you can see houses just barely seen through the brown. But I thought the cat was a, such an interesting shape. And I thought we would like to do him large on our paper. So here he is. He has an oval body. His back legs are kind of sticking out like he's walking on this ridge. And here's his face, which is a circle with triangle ears. And the whiskers, kind of like what Miss Laura was doing with Cat in the Hat. It has whiskers, and they pretty much do have even numbers on either side. The song we're singing for the week is, goes like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. A, B, C, D, E of art. That's the way that we will start. A is for artist, B is for bridge, C is for cat walking on a ridge, D is for dance, earring starts with E, art and the alphabet, A, B, C. So today, we'll lead up to A is for artist, B is for bridge, C is for cat. And let's get started using my little table. I'm using my watercolor pencils again today. It seems like I like to use those quite a bit because they blend together when I paint. Now, I want my cat to fill up the space. And in order to do that, it's going to take a long time to paint. Maybe I will fold my paper in half because I think a lot of you are using smaller pieces of paper, and this will work. I'm still doing it stand-up version vertical. I'm not doing it side to side, lying down horizontal. I'm doing it standing up. Now I'm going to use my regular colored pencil to outline it. And then the dark blue, I think they told this is indigo, yes. So I'm going to start out by sort of sketching that cat's body, an oval. And I will outline it a little darker because I'm not sure that you can see that. There's the oval of his body. Now his hind leg kind of looks like a mountain that goes out, and there are its paws. And to make it look like a cat's paw, you have to kind of make their toes go up. And if you want to make it have like little um, claws, you can do that too. The other leg he had coming out about the same distance out, and I can put the toes like that. 
Now, th this paw comes from behind his body. And you know how they always like to bat a little um, yarn ball? I'm kind of making his paw do that. And the other one is kind of just going down in front of him. But even though it looks kind of like a funny shape, once I put the claws on, it's good. I'm going to put the round head on, the triangle ears, I have him looking kind of sideways like Chagall did, and he has his two eyes here and here. And he put the nose down. Now, we know that a cat's nose has its mouth come out of its nose area like this. So now I have that part, but his tail needs to be kind of wobbly so that we can see that he has a happy self, because when cats are making their tails wag, kind of like a dog, you think, OK, that cat is happy. I'm going to put my regular colored pencils away for a minute, boys and girls, because I want to make sure I put this bright red, that's a mahogany. I like to read on the side of the pencil what it says. I'm going to put a big red circle. Do you need to do a red circle? No, but I like the inspiration of Chagall. Now, I did that to it kind of like how if it was Vincent Van Gogh doing swirls. And I am going to use the side of my pencil, and I'm going to keep my sharpener ready because I know that it's going to break again. So I'm going to go around here with the one that when I touch it with water, it will blend in. Oh, I might even use it because I broke it again. Let's see if it will blend in. I'll move this over to the side like this. It won't fall off. It's got a little ridge. And get my jar of water. This paper seems to be soaking up my water, so I'm going to take a little bit off. But oh, there. That looks good. Now, here's the tricky thing that some children don't know when you use the watercolor pencils. If you go on it when it's still wet, it adds more color, and it can add some more depth to that color. That's one thing Chagall and Monet thought. If you paint outside, which no one was doing when they were first painters, they were all painting in their studios, and they didn't have much light. So when that happened, their colors weren't very bright, and they didn't like it very much. So Pissarro told them, take your paintings outside in plein air which is in plain air. And do your paintings outside. The light will be so much brighter. Now notice, I'm getting in here, but I'm not coloring, coloring, coloring. Sorry, boys and girls. It seems like I couldn't say that word. I'm not coloring solidly, but I'm still doing my technique I've taught you. Back and forth, back and forth, kind of following the shape, going around not hurrying, because when you hurry, it goes outside of the lines. And sometimes it looks good, but a lot of times it just looks like you were rushing. And I'm going to show you. Because on the one that Chagall did, he puts little fur marks using the dark blue. So first I'm going to color in using this lighter blue. And then I'll go back in with the dark blue. And I might do it on top of the watery paper, or I might do it ahead of time. I'll do a little of both and see which one looks good. I keep having to turn my pencil, because when you shade like this, and notice how I hold my pencil to the side, I'm not coloring up and down. That makes the line sharp. I'll do it here and show you. It just isn't very good. I don't want to do very much, because then it won't blend in very well. So I'm going up here. You notice I'm going to do his tail. And I know when I do the tail and paint it, I am going to add some of the dark blue pencil. Now, I wanted to also remind you, just because I have a little something that's making me keep bump on it. Just because I chose blue, because I was inspired by Chagall, you can do your cat any color you want. I've never seen a real blue cat. So it's not like we're doing a science notebook and having to make it look like it was a um, science notebook where we're studying cats and how they move or what they eat or how they um, hunt for animals. No, I'm doing this as a make-believe cat. So I'm coloring. Most of him is colored in. I'm going to now use my water and see how it does. Oh, 
I thought I told you I was going to do some of the dark blue. So let me get my dark blue watercolor pencil. And I'm just going to do some fur marks. Fur, fur, fur marks, fur, fur. Do my fur marks on it. And maybe near the edge even, a little fur around the edge. Because sometimes when cats get frisky, they make their tail um, go up and then their fur gets up on its back even. Oh, I'm going to do a little fur on his back. Because maybe he's wondering, is that a ball or is that a sun? I could put some fur here. Shoo, 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 shoo. And let's see how that looks before I do it all over there. Wipe my brush a little. Maybe I'll put my water here so you can see what I'm doing. I also have my paper towel. So I do this a little bit. How does it look? Oh, see how it's blending? It's blending all of my scribbly marks together and making it fill in solid. And even the fur is getting kind of melty, but it makes it blend into the light blue. I like it very much. I'm going to go around the edge of the tail and make some of those fur marks stand up, but still keep it blue. Oh, yeah. This is looking how I like it. Now, here's what I started to tell you. When the paper is wet, I can go back in and do this with my um, colored pencil so that I can add some other wet kind of blue. If I don't think I've done enough, and I can go on here and add a little more fur and some curve lines on his back, I'm going to do that so his fur gets kind of even more. Maybe I'll make his chest dark, dark fur. Put some around here. I need to do something about his eyes because he looks like he is seeing into the camera with no color at all. Get that on there. Oh, and maybe some pink inside his ears. I always think animals look sweet when they have pink inside their ears. Boys and girls, let me tell you about what's going to happen tomorrow. Let's see, we did A, B, C. Tomorrow is D. And I already told you it's dance. And the thing about the dance that I'm going to be teaching you, it's a dance called the jitterbug. So tonight, will you ask your family if they know what the jitterbug is? If they've ever danced the jitterbug? It's a dance that's being done in Harlem in the art that we're going to look at. And it is such a fun dance. I used to do it when I was in college. So maybe you can watch a video of someone doing the jitterbug because it's really a fun dance. Oh, Ms. Reedwright, please give this cat some eyes. OK, I'll color it in. Boys and girls. This was a fun thing to do. I think I'm going to give him a ridge. Remember, we're doing a cat walking on a ridge. I might put his mountain behind him. That'll help me remember to finish it up and have some grass behind him, even though it looks like he's floating in the sky. All right. Oh, this has been so much fun. It's so relaxing to paint. I can put this green paint under his legs. Oh, his whiskers, too. Don't forget that, Mrs. Reedwright. Maybe I'll give him some purple ones. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining me today. Happy to have you here. See you tomorrow when we do William Johnson. Good for everyone.